Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. We start out in the direction of Evdivka where the Russians are flanking Novoselivka Persia from the north. This is followed by the capture of Vushkut where the Russians moved west of Sukhil and captured Vushkut fairly quickly due to the lack of Ukrainian presence within the village. The majority of the Ukrainian defensive positions were located in Yevhenivka and to the west of that village. This allowed the Russians to quickly take control of Vushkut, and with a combined assault to the south of Sukhil, they've been able to secure the southern flank and push further westwards. This has proceeded all the way to the riverbank in the Vovcha river line, and has been able to secure multiple forest lines north of Novoselivka Persia. Now the Russians have control over a wide area to the north of Novoselivka Persia, and is able to advance in multiple directions both in the direction of the Vovtia river line, where they can cut off the Ukrainian supply lines, or directly down towards Novoselivka Persia, attacking it from the north, or attacking the fortified positions, gaining control of those would allow a certain foothold here in the north, where the Uk Russians will be able to launch a strong assault towards Novoselivka Persia, where the Ukrainians would be lacking in any significant defensive positions. Not to mention the fact that the Russians now have full control over the heights here to the north of Novoselivka Persia. At the height of elevation of 213 meters is where the fortified positions of the Ukrainians are north of the town. While the town itself is located at around 167 meters, that's a 50 meter difference in elevation between the north and the south. This is why the Russians are working on the northern position first. At the same time, the Russians have pushed in the south and to the east, where they already have control over the heights. So we see heavy fighting both to the north and to the east of Novoselivka Persia over the heights. Even to the northwest of Vomanske, the Russians already are contesting and fighting over the heights here as well. So the fighting is continuing over the heights as the Russians are trying to push forwards bit by bit. In the direction of Voshkhod and Sokil, we see that Sokil is also located somewhere around the heights. And the fighting is taking place to the north and to the south of these villages where the heights are located. So the Russians are completely avoiding the low ground and are fighting through the high ground over the fortified positions to gain control of these villages and expand the zone of control east of the Vovcha river line. Based on this, we see it is clear the Russians will likely continue westward along the river line and down south, capturing the fortified position before storming Novoselivka Persia from the north, east, and south at the same time from the high ground as they have managed to gain control over the majority of those positions. Further right north in the direction of New York, we see that there is confirmation of the Russian positions here in the southern parts of it. According to this geolocated footage, we see the Russian positions here, and a Russian soldier walks up to a building. We assume that there is a Ukrainian soldier in it, and he throws in massive explosives into the building and starts running away. The explosives blow up fairly quickly, so we don't even get to see if the Russian soldier survives that explosion. But we do see that it was a massive explosion completely leveling down the building. If this is the sort of operations the Russians are doing, they are moving from building to building, throwing ex in explosives. We have now seen this in New York. We've also seen it in Karelivka with a prior relocated footage in the northern parts of it. So we see that this is a general thing the Russians are currently doing, and it's a very risky maneuver, especially when the explosives blow up that quickly. I don't think it was planned to be that quickly. I think they usually have a longer fuse. We saw that in Karelivka. It was much longer fuse. The soldier managed to run away completely before it blew up. But here it blew up pretty much instantly, so there must have been an issue with it. But based on this, we see that this is a very surefire way to clear defensive positions by like completely leveling it. If you can't, if a drone can only hold like five kilos, then a human can hold like 30. And this shows that it is fairly effective if it works properly. In the direction of Drushba, there is further Russian advances within the village as they've moved in a further in the northern direction. This is also confirmed with this geolocated footage here, showing the Ukrainian position slowly being pushed out of the northern parts of Drushba. This is an attempt by the Russians to secure the final parts of the canal line. By moving along the western part, they're able to flank the Ukrainian positions in the area which will strengthen a Russian push fear from the east along the canal line. Gaining full control of it again would strengthen the Russian positions here in the north and will allow them to concentrate more forces in the direction of Drushba and Pivnishne. At the same time, moving slowly here in the north, creating a strong flank and gaining control over Drushba would allow the Russians to push towards Pivnishne with a stronger force and then start pushing within the town itself. 
The fighting in Turetsk is likely to continue with small positional fighting and small advances as the Russians have now reached the next line of defense. At the first one, they largely caught the Ukrainians off guard, but now the Ukrainians have rotated new units into Turetsk, and it is likely that it will slow down the Russian advances in the area, especially with the heights and very well fortified positions under their control. However, the Russians, with their breakthrough near the fortified positions in Pivnishne, are able to, at the very least, push through to capture the Rushba and move on to the apartment complex area in the eastern parts of Turetsk. But it's very likely that the Russians will reach Turetsk itself, at the very least, in this offensive operation. It's also likely they will gain control over the second line of defense, but heavy fighting will take place and will likely take a long time. In the Siversk section of the front line, we see that the Russians have managed to capture the majority of Spirina. We see this footage here showing a Russian flag being hailed in the western parts of the village. And this shows that the Russians have made significant advances within it. There is reports that fighting continues in the western parts where the Ukrainian soldiers still have a presence and heavy Russian shelling is taking place to completely wipe it off the map and which that will lead to full control over the area to the Russians. We see that the buildings are completely destroyed from the satellite imagery from 2023. So the majority of the village was already completely destroyed, but there are still some standing buildings and there are basements and other fortified positions within the village, allowing for the Ukrainians to still hold positions within it. As a quick correction, it was further reported the Russians do now have full control over Spirina and the Ukrainians were completely kicked out of the town. Therefore, the Russians now have control over Spirina. For yet another time, after multiple years of fighting over the village, the Russians now have full control of it. At the same time, there are some fortified positions to the north of the village, which the Ukrainians still have control of, which means that the Russian control over Spirina is not steadfast, needs to expand in multiple directions before they can securely hold control of it, and then push on towards even the Rivka to the west, as they continue developing the offensive operations, as well as in the direction of Vimka, where they've recently advanced multiple times in the south of it, as positional fighting has continued all the way from below Rivka to the south, and along the railway line, mainly towards Vimka. In the Kharkiv Luhansk section of the front line, in the direction of Berestove and Pishane, the Russians have made a small advancement in the direction of the fortified positions south of Pishane. The Russians have done positional fighting following the capture of Berestove here, where they first captured this small part, and now they have advanced further. This is against Ukrainian fortified positions in the high grounds south of Pishane. If the Russians can control over these fortified positions, they'll have a significant advantage fighting over Pishane, and the Ukrainians would likely be forced to withdraw from it due to the high ground under our Russian control. However, there's also fortified positions to the north, which are also located on the high grounds, which would allow the Ukrainians to prevent Russians from entering the town. However, holding on to the town is dependent on the Russians not capturing these fortified positions, therefore heavy fighting is taking place here in the forest line and fortified positions south of Pishane, to prevent the Russians from gaining control of it, and this causes the Russian advances to be very slow and far in between. We see continuous fighting here in the section of the front line, where we move on to the north, where the Ukrainians have been able to launch successful counterattacks in Hluboke and Vovchensk. We see in the direction of Vovchensk, the Ukrainians have been able to capture the eastern parts of the town. Another street was captured by the Ukrainians following heavy fighting, and we see in this footage here that the Ukraine positions was geolocated in the northern parts, after Russian FPV drones hitting their positions. In the central parts by the Citadel area, apartment complex area, the Russians continue storming their apartment complexes, moving slowly to gain control over it, recapturing those positions, and the Ukrainians are moving here to the southwest of the apartment complex areas in an attempt to flank the Russian positions by the aggregate plant, where fighting is taking place here in the direction of the northern and southern flank. The Ukrainians have here been uh, attempting to encircle Russian soldiers in their aggregate plant for a very long time. They even claimed at multiple points to have been successful, but fighting still takes place in the aggregate plant, and the Russians have even been able to advance a tiny bit within it, but there's no significant exchanges within the aggregate plant. The main fighting is taking place here in the north by the citadel area, as the Russians have started sending troops in to storm the apartment complex buildings, following a heavy bombing campaign by the Russians on those positions, which allowed them to weaken their positions ahead of the storming of them, and this has allowed the Russians to capture multiple apartment complexes. 
and the direction of Luboke, we see a significant development as first off, the Ukrainians managed to advance slightly here in the southern parts, but no significant changes here. However, in the northern parts, the Ukrainians have been able to cross over the river line and forest line here in the west of Luboke and capture the fortified positions as is confirmed with this you located footage here of Russian soldiers shelling Ukraine positions in the north of Luboke. Now, the Ukrainians are already talking about an encirclement of Luboke, however, that is simply not the case. First of all, there is this fortified positions by the Russians here in the east of Luboke, and if we take a look at the topographic map, we can see that it is located on the heights overlooking the town. It is at a height of 194 meters compared to Luboke at 160, that's a 34 meter advantage as well as the positions generally, which is still under Russian control, all being located in the heights, while the advances the Ukrainians have made have been in the low ground positions. At the same time, we see that there is a connection with the roads both to the northeast and to the east of Liboke, so it is not yet an encirclement. However, this does give a, the Ukrainians a significant advantage and the possibility of moving further north and east of Liboke if they bypass it through the forest area as well to be able to flank the Russian positions by the fortified positions, or if they manage to recapture the fortified positions completely, they'll be able to severely hit the Russian positions within Luboke. However, so far they've been unable to make significant progress towards the fortified positions. It would also be very risky for the Ukrainians to continue pushing here north of Luboke because the Russians would be able to flank those positions by attacking from Strelecha to the north, where they could flank the Ukrainian positions that are attempting to flank the Russian positions, or they can send a strong push here from the fortified position towards the flank of the Ukrainians attacking Hiroboke. So the Ukrainian positions aren't really that powerful if the Russians are able to launch a counterattack, precisely because it's so close to the borderline. So the Russians do have units available to launch such an operation, and the Ukrainians would be taking a huge risk if they do not have a strong flank launching this flanking maneuver. However, the Ukrainians have been successful in the past launching risky maneuvers, therefore I will not make any conclusions yet. We'll have to see how the situation develops here in the future. And that's going to be all for this update. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe and check out my Patreon for additional content. Thank you for watching and have a great day.